Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Age of Empires 3 The Asian Dynasties with your host as always, Madrybred, this time with the Chinese campaign! If you're wondering why it says that three stages are already unlocked, it's because some failed recordings where some audio got corrupted, so this is my fourth time doing this first Chinese stage, and I think I have the problem solved, so let's get into it. All my life, I have had the same dream. A beach, palms in the morning light, waves on the sand. I do not know this place or where to find it, only that my destiny waits beyond the tide. Animals, these peasants should lick their fingers, for this will be their last taste of such riches. Not all of us were born into royalty, Admiral. I was raised one of these animals. Captain, it shows. The treasure fleet is a testament to our Emperor's genius. You know as well as I do that the Emperor is a pampered old fool. He should be more careful with his belongings. Ships vanish. Treasures never reach their destinations. Good thing we are here to prevent such tragedies. Believe what you want. Every time that boy opens his mouth, I want to fill it with my fist. What is your name, sailor? I am Lao Chen. A lifetime at sea has left me stinking of fish. If it floats, I have crewed it. Then tell me. What do you predict for our grand treasure fleet? The fleet will sail on to glory without question. But beware, the Admiral. I am not the only one around here who stinks. Captain, pirate vessels prowl the waters. Leave them be, for now. Say that again when you're picking wreckage off the seabed. What is the delay? The men are tired, Admiral. They cannot work with broken backs. They will work until the task is finished, broken backs or not. Can we not give some of this work to the new sailors you hired? Those sailors are my concern. I know they are not sailors, Admiral. It is obvious that not one of them has ever set foot on a boat. They are mercenaries, scoundrels, and should be boiled in their own juices. Silence! It would be wise for you to remember who commands this fleet. <laughs> Alright, it's time for our first battle is China. I find this team quite a bit more fun than Japan. The fleet is under attack. We must hurry and finish building the flagship before we can sail. Captain, I have more bad news. The pirates have captured our docks to the west. Something must be done. Alright. I will explain everything unique about China very soon. They have a lot of very unique and fun uh, things to their playstyle. But first we need to move west and attack the castles, the first objective. However, there will be some pirates along the shore. Here they are. What we want to do is get Chen to anchor fist one of them, his ability. Which is to kill people in an arc. Like that. You can also knock over trees, weirdly enough. Okay. So, China. Like the other Asian teams, they have their export, of course, and can call in mercenaries through that from other races, although with China, I believe it's only from Asian teams. Uh, that might be a campaign-only thing, though. And we're shipping in a castle there. Castles are just like with Japan. And I know I'm going by really fast here, but we'll have plenty of time this stage to explain it. Okay, 
Our unique things are that we have villages instead of houses. This is a village. Uh, what villages are, are instead of 100 wood for a house, it's 200 wood for a village, and a village is worth two houses. It's got a built-in livestock pen that's just like the European sheep livestock pen. And also, it has upgrades that cost wood that make it so each village is worth even more supply. This would be a good place to establish a trade route. We must give our workers the right materials to finish the task. Okay, so we're gonna put a, a castle right here on the coast because more ships will come later. So having a castle there is very, very helpful. And we're just building these trade posts as per the instructions. And we want to ship in some more units. A very useful thing about villages is that they can actually get shipments at them much like an outpost could. So it's a good way to separate economic uh, drops from the home shipments, rather, uh, from your military ones. That's what I like to use it for, at least. We have these unique flamethrowers that you saw in combat earlier. These are mostly good at small and very clustered together groups of infantry. <laughs> like that. Uh, the flamethrower is a very powerful Chinese weapon. It's a siege weapon that only requires it be age 2. Oh, right, we've got to burn this down. Good, we have our Chokunu here. That is a uh, repeating crossbowman for China. You can grab that and then go back. And uh, so we've explained the village. The other big unique thing for China are how they train their armies. Now, their barracks is a war academy, and instead of training individual units, it trains uh, banner armies. Think Russia in that it's a group of units for a slight discount. However, uh, instead it's two different kinds of unit, and you pick which kind of banner army you want, and each one will specialize at uh, taking out a different kind of unit. For instance, uh, the old Han army is... It's good against heavy infantry and against cavalry, because it is Shokunu for against cavalry, or for against uh, infantry, rather, and pikemen for against uh, infant cavalry. <laughs> Sorry, distracted. Not only do the pirates raid our ships, but now they kidnap our laborers. We cannot finish the flagship unless every hand has work. Okay. Captain, the ship is coming along nicely. You must work to maintain the flow of resources. Okay, so now we need to move east and free some shipbuilders. So what we're doing here is I just shipped in a bunch of units. We're shipping in some more, actually. Want shipments to come in here. We're going to pay some, some wood soon to help with the population cap. Okay. We're training up some standard armies here. Those are the blue ones. It's three Chokunu, two Step Raiders. This is what I'm going to be using a lot in the campaign, because you don't fight much cavalry in the campaign, so we don't have much use of the old Han army, as we don't need pikemen. And both of them come with three Chokunu, and Chokunu are just a very good standard unit. So what we want right now, actually, is we need more wood. We are training too many soldiers. Build a village to house our growing numbers. And that's just Lao Chen teaching us about uh, the unique villages. Well, barely teaching us. Okay, so we just got a village done. That's good. That's our pikemen shipment. So they'll be useful just basically as meat shields. They are anti-cavalry, but again, there's very little cavalry to fight. Now, for unique units of this campaign, we have Lao Chen, who has his anchor fist, as I showed earlier, and we also have uh, Captain Huang, our main character, who, like a normal explorer, can build um, can build trade posts. He can also throw Heavenly Fire, which is a grenade weapon. Very powerful siege damage and great at taking up clusters of enemies. The pirates are based in a village east of here. Drive them out, or our work will never end. Okay, looks like some pirate ships have arrived. But these castles and stuff should be able to hold them off for quite a while. We should be good. And we might as well keep the resources going. Okay, so all we need to do now is destroy the town center. 
which should be very, very easy because of how quickly we're doing the stage. <laughs> Ten minutes into the recording. Um, wow, and only six minutes into the stage. All we need to do is take out this city center. And if we can find Huang here, use W, and that's his heavenly fire. Decent amount of siege damage on that. So they're likely going to train some banner armies and beat us up a little bit, but we'll be fine. Oh, they took out the castle? I guess we'll call the alarm, but we'll be fine. Oh yeah, we've almost got this one down. China's a really fun team. They're not one of the strongest in the game, but they're a very fun one. Impressed, Captain. You execute pirates like a seasoned sailor. I find no pleasure in it. Now come. We must finish the fleet and set out to sea. Alright, now like usual uh, with these with these uh, story missions, because you can breeze through these story missions pretty fast, it's a good idea to just take a lot of uh, unit shipments. Mostly unit shipments, a few unit upgrades, so you can just do shipments and breeze through the stages. And we're not going to have any shortage of levels in the campaign, so... Grab everything you want. If this were a skirmish match, I would probably be opting to get a lot more economic things, but... It's not skirmish, so... We want to get rid of a lot of these economic things. We're even going to get it Actually, you know what? Uh, we shouldn't get rid of the hunting one. That's maybe the one economic thing I'm going to hold on to. We want, uh, ones you want to specifically look for are the Mongolian Scourge, so that our horsemen do more damage to buildings and villagers. That's a very good one. Uh, get rid of almost all of the economic ones, but some of these shipments can be useful. And you don't really need any Age 4 stuff. You'll almost never, if at all, be an Age 4. Age 2 and 3 you'll be in quite often, though. So what we're looking for is really anything we can take before that. Iron flails and meteor hammers are especially high-priority ones because they are incredibly strong Chinese-only units. See, two flamethrowers is kind of nice, but age 3 for two flamethrowers, we could just afford them quite easily by then. Flying crows... Yeah, I think we're doing good. We can take two more cards with us. So I guess we'll take Unlimited Meteor Hammer. And 21 Chokunu. And that should be good. Alright, on the next episode we go into the second uh, battle of the Chinese campaign. Until next time, have a nice day.